it's hard to say what's gonna happen in the future. So let's go back to November 1st, 2022. The world did not know ChatGPT existed. Some people knew because they were working on it, like Bill Gates knew he was demoed it early. But most of us have no idea what was coming. And ask anybody in October what was hot in technology. You are unlikely to hear the word AI is the first one. And it's only been what, 14, 15 months? Uh, when ChatGPT came to be, there was like a lot of a lot of people were saying like, this is going to transform everything and everything will be so much different. Like right now, immediately, old ways of so developing software are dead, like everything is new now. I do not believe this is what happens. I do not believe that this is actually what is going to happen in the near future. It kind of feels like uh, the advent of AI has given us some new capabilities. There is a kind of a new level of productivity, a new state that we have like gone up to where people can actually use AI to summarize things, they can use AI to generate boilerplate, they can use AI to help accomplish some common tasks. I personally use Copilot, like day in and day out. It's integrated in my experience. It has been since they released very early alphas. I miss it when I don't have it in an IDE where it's not integrated, because I sort of miss that little whisper that keeps helping me write or start writing things or does some things for me. Lots of boilerplate, lots of simple things like uh, test cases, which is the basics, algorithmics, um, when I need to do something that is algorithmic in nature. It doesn't really help me do like large things like major factoring decisions or um, more complex interactions with my own or somebody else's APIs in, my, in the same project that I'm working on. So that sort of thing, I have not seen it do the right way. Hallucinations don't help. It inventing methods that don't exist don't help. Class names, you name it. Yeah, so first of all, like, like one simple thing is that like software development does not end with writing code. You also have to maintain code, and this involves reading code. For some tasks, you will be able to like ask the computer to do it. And the reason why this is going to be, while this is possible, is because so much of software development is incredibly repetitive. So there are a million login forms written every day. Like every site has a login form, it has a login field and a password field. And every developer writes, uh, like every login form requires an input of multiple persons. So there is a product manager that, uh, who designs the user journey through the login form. And there is a UX designer that draws the login form and specifies how the validation is going to be handled. And this is different in every single online shop, slightly different, slightly different set of bugs, slightly different UX. And then every developer implements this form from scratch and every QA engineer tests the implementation of this form. And so many people are uh, involved in making one millionth, the millionth copy of a login form. This is waste. And this waste is going to be, hopefully, the AI can help us get rid of so much of this waste. I believe that right now we are at the point of time where no one can predict what will change in a year, two or three years. Because there are very intuitive things that, yes, uh, we will get, uh, in some cases, less quality code because AI uh, will hel helps you write code but doesn't help you to read it. The code that it creates, it's uh, more error prone than the code that a programmer themselves is creating. That's quite obvious. What's less obvious is that uh, some fundamental uh, platforms like, for example, Stack Overflow can probably become extinct. From what we already see from the traffic reports is that Stack Overflow, uh, it's steadily loses its popularity and they probably they don't know what to do with it. So it may influence the programming landscape a lot. GPT helps a lot when you do some research and you need to go and understand some obscure thing, which you would want to have a blog article about that specific thing. But it probably it probably exists, but it's not easy to find. So Googling, you'll get bits and pieces, but not a holistic story. If you ask GPT the right way, and if you know what to ask for, it'll give you that story you were looking for. I've seen it on multiple occasions. Extremely helpful. Just like with any tool, I think it's very important to know what the tool, what the tool is and what the tool can do for you. 
like for example, refactoring tools. You have to know what refactoring tools are available and in which situations they can benefit you. Same with AI. It would be stupid for someone to not learn what AI tools can do for you. And uh, know where to apply them. Know where they can save you time and where they will waste your time. And also know the limitations of those tools. And uh, like if you want to replace your understanding of code with those AI tools, that you are not, then you are not going to be very successful as a programmer because the code generated by those tools will break and you, have to, you will have to figure out how to fix it and what it does wrong. And uh, you have to also to be able to recognize when it does something wrong. And uh, this requires the same level of skills that you need now to understand why the code you wrote is wrong. So yeah, you have to learn the tools and you have to know when to use them and when to avoid them. Right now, I believe that if you start your career in tech, if you are just going to go into tech, it doesn't change much from what was like five years ago. Uh, you still have to do pretty same things. You have to read books, you have to uh, watch courses, you have to write whole lots of code because that's how you learn how to program. But still, uh, AI, is a very good assistant that can help you to overcome difficulties much faster than it was before. Instead of, I don't know, spending a day trying to understand how to set up your development environment and fix this irritating pro problem with, I don't know, with Ruby, you can just ask AI assistant and it will help it. Uh, just not become too over-reliant on AI because at the end of the day, uh, at least, in 2024, you will eventually face a problem that AI can solve for you and that you will have to delve into yourself. It helps more experienced people more. And you probably guys have seen it and have read about this. So it makes experienced engineers more productive, noticeably so. And it's not exactly the same with less experienced engineers, because if you're less experienced, you have less idea about what it is you're doing and less ability to validate what it is the copilot or GPT told you to do, which is very similar to what you would have done with the overflow by simply copying and pasting example without fully understanding it. That's how I see it sort of help me today and help sort of everybody else who's using it today. We do not seem to be in a world where the software development profession is fundamentally changing as much as other people, as some people have predicted it to be. And also, like, of course, the AI technology is evolving. We are going to get GPT-5 and GPT-whatever and the Google models and the Anthropic models and all the other models and open source models and everything and so on and so forth. But maybe I'm wrong, but I kind of do not see that those, those newer and better models will fundamentally change the nature of software development more than the change that has already occurred. And a big part of that is simply the lack of training data. So like you have already, they, have, they are already trained on all the open source code that is out there and there is simply no way to get as much high quality code or better quality code as the models already have access to. And I think that without better training data, it's not possible to raise up the bar in terms of what the models can achieve. My feeling is that it's not going to change dramatically in five years, similarly to how self-driving cars have not changed dramatically the roads, and yet five, ten years ago, I remember the conference ten years ago, there was a question, sort of who sees self-driving cars on the roads in a year? Very few people did. And what happened? No. It's been ten years and it's not, it's basically where it was as far as adoption and a disruption to the driving. Same with AI applied to programming, I think. I don't expect things to change drastically, but I expect things to sort of get better and better, certain aspects of what we do get more and more automated, and help that I get from my co-pilot will be better, just like my ID got a lot better with simple, simple things like IntelliSense and scaffoldings and templates and what have you. It's a lot more productive to program today than it was 20 years ago. There is a lot of new development, a lot of original development. This development is much harder to just and when you try to explain what you want to achieve when doing this type of development, you have to go into detail, you have to be specific. Yes, of course, the AI is going to automate some of the work of some of the people, but all in all, I think the software development profession is here to stay with us. <laughs>